These are two things I hope will be answered through this lecture. Number two here, the water permeability. What's the name of that protein that we need? Here's a hint. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about what happens in the proximal convoluted tubule, the PCT, which is this first region of the nephron after filtration has occurred. And this is where about 67% of all our filtrate is reabsorbed. Almost 100%, so 99 or so of the nutrients, so glucose, amino acids, etc. So a lot of reabsorption occurs, right? We're going to have a little bit of secretion as well. So in order for reabsorption to occur, we've got to pass through this apical surface and the basal lateral surface of this simple cuboidal epithelium and then into right our paratubular capillaries. This is going to rely on the mechanisms we saw in the previous video related to transepithelial transport and hopefully ones that you remember from before. So first I wanna go through what, what those things are we'll, we'll be talking about and then we'll draw them how they do it. So first of all, we're gonna have sodium. We've gotta get it through the apical surface. That's going to occur through some leak channels some co-transport, um, some antiport. So both co-transport and antiport are moving along with or the opposite way of another, pro another molecule. So for example, sodium glucose co-transport. On the basal lateral surface, we're going to have active transport, our sodium potassium pump. There's a lot of ways to move sodium. Um, it's really important to reabsorb. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that. I already mentioned glucose. So glucose, amino acids, vitamins and other nutrients, um, some other ions are going to move through this apical side via secondary active transport co-transport with sodium. That's gonna allow them to get into the epithelial cell. Then we're gonna have um, also facilitated diffusion. And what determines which one of these occurs where is where the gradients are. So electrochemical gradients. All right, we have water we want to reabsorb. It's going to follow the solutes. This is osmosis. So it's going to move through the plasma membrane, through the phospholipid bilayer itself, as well as aquaporin, the water channels that facilitate water movement. And it's going to follow the way the solids are movement, moving. So this is osmosis. We've got other ions, so chloride, um, calcium, Urea is not an ion, but also similar in that it's going to use paracellular, so go between the cells primarily. And this is going to be using so passive diffusion, so using electrochemical gradients. Lipids similarly are able to use passive diffusion, but they go actually through the plasma membrane. So transcellular. And lastly, we've got bicarbonate, an important buffer that we want to be able to re reabsorb. This is going to be um, linked to hydrogen secretion. So this is one thing that is secreted and sodium reabsorption. So these things are all re things that are reabsorbed besides this hydrogen secretion, which we'll, we'll see. Okay, let's look at what the glucose reabsorption, um, let's start with that. So here is our lumen of our filtrate, our epithelial cell with the apical membrane and our basolateral membrane. What is in between those, the space here, is our interstitial space. 
interstitial fluid, ISF. And here is our capillary. And we want to be moving most things, everything shown in this picture, this way. That's reabsorption. So first, what we're going to do is, is have, we, we do have a gradient for sodium. Remember, sodium is high outside the cell and low inside the cell. It's also relatively high then in the lumen. So because of this gradient, which is set up by what, what, what makes that gradient exist is this right here, our sodium potassium pump, ATP pump, uses ATP to move sodium and potassium against their concentration gradients. Once sodium is low inside the cell, so I can put this, this is low, um, we can use that gradient to move other things against their gradients. So glucose is actually high inside the cell, low out here, and that's actually because it, it diffuses into the capillary and gets swept away, and actually relatively low in the, in the lumen. Um, so we need something to help move it in against its gradient. That is going to be our, this guy is our sodium glucose co-transporter. This uses secondary active transport. And amino acids, some vitamins would use a similar mechanism to this, a different protein like a sodium amino acid co-transporter. Once sodium and glucose have moved in, water can follow down its osmotic gradient. So this protein would be aquaporin. Now we've gotten sodium, glucose, and water inside our, our epithelial cell. Great, that's part way through. Um, we still have another membrane to go through. That can occur through facilitated diffusion for both water and glucose. So this is our, just a glucose transporter. Why facilitated diffusion? Diffusion, because we're going from high to low glucose concentration. So we don't need a pump or a secondary active transport here. It's just diffusion down its gradient. Water, same thing, osmotic gradient. Sodium goes out through the sodium potassium pump. It's getting pumped out. Um, and that's really important for its reabsorption. I think that is it for this picture, um, I'm gonna, so this is one, we've, we've done glucose, sodium, a bit of sodium and water. Um, we still have a few more things to talk about the processes of reabsorption and the secretion of hydrogen ions. So let's make sure we can see all the processes on this cross section here. Um, again, here's our lumen uh, zoomed in right here apical, basolateral, capillary. So we've got to move um, sodium and potassium. Sodium is going to go out here, potassium in. We'll talk about potassium secretion um, in the distal convoluted tubule. So because of this gradient, we can move glucose and sodium in. So these, that is actually um, reabsorption of glucose and sodium, sodium glucose co-transporter. Once glucose is inside the cell, it can diffuse out through the glucose, tr tr glucose transporter. This is facilitated diffusion. Amino acids and some vitamins, some other ions are gonna be the same mechanism as glucose. We've also got sodium moving in through some leak channels. So this is a leak channel. Leak channels could exist for various ions. Um, this is a leak channel for sodium because sodium is moving through it. I've got another leak channel shown down here. This is actually going to be for hydrogen secretion. So I'm gonna draw secretion in red because that's what I have for my key here. So this is hydrogen ion 
going this way. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, actually, I'll come back to that now. That hydrogen is going to, we want to secrete it. It's actually going to be secreted via antiport. Um, what do you think could antiport hydrogen? How could we be um, something that is going to go down its gradient and be a positively charged thing to be electrically neutral? Sodium. So here's another way of bringing sodium in. And these are all reabsorption, which my key I have blue. Reabsorption this way. So look at all these mechanisms for sodium. It needs to be reabsorbed. Um, that's really important for maintaining osmolarity of our blood. It also is going to be helpful for us bringing glucose amino acids in and secreting hydrogen out into the urine, that acidic hydrogen ion. So that blue, the purple thing I have right there, that is um, our antiporter. Specifically, sodium hydrogen antiporter. So we've got everything being reabsorbed besides hydrogen that we've seen so far. So following all that movement of the ions is going to be water. Water moves in through aquaporins. Then we've got lipids can just diffuse. Some other substances such as chloride, other, some other ions are going to actually diffuse in between the cells. They can sneak in there. Okay, that's most of it. One more thing now, bicarbonate. We want to be able to reclaim bicarbonate. And that's gonna be linked to this hydrogen ion secretion. So that hydrogen ion is coming in from the blood or secreting it. Um, it that's actually passive diffusion. That hydrogen ion is going to combine with um, bicarbonate. I'm sorry, it's not, no, it's not. <laughs> that hydrogen ion, I already had it, it's gonna flow out that way. For reclaiming bicarbonate, we are talking about um, what's in here, right? So I'm gonna draw you this reaction, what's happening in the lumen, which should look familiar. We've got hydrogen ions, we've got bicarbonate. Those can um, form water, and carbon dioxide. Why would we want to do this? Because both of these things can pass easily through this membrane. Bicarbonate is negatively charged, hydrogen ions, there's no drive for it. We actually don't want it to go this way, but it's the bicarbonate that we can't easily get across this membrane, whereas water and carbon dioxide can. So those two things are going to then diffuse either through facilitated diffusion or carbon dioxide can just pass right through the so simple diffusion. Um, they're going to go in this way. Inside the cell, are we just going to have them diffuse out? No, because we want to reclaim bicarbonate, but not hydrogen ions. So we're going to have the reaction occur in reverse. I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing, H2O plus carbon dioxide, that's what just diffused in. Those are going to form our hydrogen ion and H and bicarbonate. Now we can have bicarbonate be reabsorbed. It actually moves along with sodium as well. Imagine that plus sodium and our hydrogen ion, what's gonna to happen to it? It's going, that's it right there, and go out that way. 
So it's a way of reabsorbing bicarbonate, which is that buffer, while secreting hydrogen ions. Carbonic anhydrase is going to be present to facilitate these chemical reactions. Okay, I know this is a lot. Um, we will keep reviewing it. Hopefully you can see the parts that are review. So the glucose transport, um, sodium, possible ways of sodium moving, osmosis following those things. And then everything else, it's what we know about the chemicals, right? So lipids can go through the membrane. Um, hydrogen ion bicarbonate, that's probably the most new one, although you do know the reaction, right? So you've seen that reaction that is catalyzed by, bi by carbonic anhydrase. You've seen that before.